Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Ricoh 500G. It was made by Ricoh's Taiwanese subsidiary starting in about 1972. This little rangefinder is shutter priority and unlike a lot of the rangefinders of this era, it's also full manual and without the metering it can also work with a dead battery. It has a 40 millimeter Rikonon lens. I read that it's four elements in three groups. I haven't verified that. It focuses from 0.9 meters to infinity and the f-stops go from f2.8 to f16. Um, I don't know who the manufacturer of the shutter is but it goes from an eighth of a second to one five hundredth of a second plus bulb in shutter priority mode, the aperture ring is this one really close to the body. Um, you set it to A, pick your shutter speed, it'll pick the aperture for you. Any of the settings away from the A and you're shooting in manual mode. It uses a cadmium sulfide meter, it's within the filter ring, and 46 millimeter filters. And one thing that's nice to remember, set the shutter to the B setting, and that turns off the meter. I doubt if he uses much with the lens cap on, but if you set it to bulb, you're definitely off. Uh, the viewfinder has a me uh, needle along the right. It shows you your selected aperture or uh, the recommended aperture if you are shooting in manual mode has a split image rangefinder, thankfully for the age of this. This one's nice and bright and sharp, really easy to use. Uh, it doesn't do parallax correction, but it has parallax marks for when you're shooting up close. And anytime you move the aperture ring away from A, it shows an M in the viewfinder, letting you know that you're in manual mode. It has a hot shoe, and this one still has the original protector and on the left side it also has a PC sync socket. It's a leaf shutter so it'll sync to a flash at any of the selected uh, shutter speeds. There's no flashmatic settings or anything like that so you need to know your guide number and a good idea of your distance so you can get the distance right off the focusing ring once you've lined it up in the rangefinder or if you're using it uh, for zone focusing. It'll accept uh, films from ISO 25 to 800. And that's this little knob on the front here surrounding the lens. Uh, originally it used a 1.35 volt mercury battery. I get good metering with the 1.4 volt zinc air hearing aid batteries. I read somewhere that it has a regulation circuit in it but this did meter differently using a 1.5 volt uh, LR44 battery. So I'll stick with the hearing aid batteries. It meters close enough. It also has an 8 second self timer. You set it with this lever here. So amazingly that still works. One unusual thing about uh, the 500G In the back, it kind of overlays the whole area here, and there's a ton of foam that uh, makes up the light seal. I wanted to run this guy through a test before I cut out a bunch of custom bits of foam. Um, so I did uh, put some felt around the viewfinder, it also would have leaked light through there. But then for light tightness, I just went around the edges with some console tape. It's like painter's tape, it doesn't leave residue. This stuff's black and transmits very little light. My test roll was some expired Fuji film. I took it with me on a climbing trip uh, up Engineer Mountain in Colorado. We also hung out in Silverton, geeked out on some of the cool old cars up there. So I really, really like this guy. Um, being able to keep shooting at something besides you know, a sync speed 
with the batteries dead is really awesome. Physically, it's pretty darn small. Although it's hefty, it's a metal body. I really, really like this. So, so far, the ones I've shot with, for little tiny range finders, this one's right up there with the Olympus XA. This one's a bit bigger, a little more traditionally shaped, but it's a cool, cool camera, so I'll definitely shoot with it again. So I'll load some black and white in this guy, post some more pictures over on the blog, and I'll see you then.